This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time. Content presented in the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the host and guest and may not represent the views and opinions of the Whole Care Network. Always consult with your physician for any medical advice and always consult with your attorney for any legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. The following podcast sometimes offers unusual solutions to usual problems. These solutions are meant for qualified agencies or individuals to put into action. And I'd be willing to bet that's not you. Listen, folks, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Neither should you. So, let's go have a laugh. Welcome to Unscrew It Up. We are the podcast that offers differently twisted solutions to life's little problems. I'm Josh. I'm Amanda. And Amanda, sometimes we come up with solutions to problems that you didn't even know you had. Okay. Do you have problems for me that I don't know I have? Well, that's the basis of today's episode. I'm going to offer different names for body parts because I contend that you should know what they do based on their names. Okay. I don't typically need to talk about body parts, but I might. So go ahead. Well, but what if you needed to convey it to an alien race of jellyfish people? I don't want to live with jellyfish people. I'm terrified of regular jellyfish. I don't want to live with them. Regardless, we need to be able to communicate what things do by what we call them, I think. That's assuming that they speak English. Okay, well, we'll solve that problem on a different day. Okay. Speaking of solving problems on different days, last week we came up with a bunch of workplace solutions. So my first question to you, Amanda, is were you able to put into place any of the solutions that we came up with? No. No nap? No one gave me nap pods. Although somebody did ask me for a nap pod last week. Who does not listen to our podcast? Tell me how that happened. I, it was like midday and it rained for four days straight and my office is a whole bunch of windows. So it was gray and it was, I don't know, probably two or three in the afternoon and I was just rolling around in my office chair up and down the aisle of the people I work with saying <laughs> it's nap time because I was, I was done and I couldn't focus anymore. And somebody said, yeah, I'm going to need you to get us some nap pods. So yeah, see, it's a thing. Nice. But no, no one got me nap pods. What else did I suggest well is there a suggestion box at your work there is there's a virtual one oh so there's not really a suggestion that's like a google form okay but it's anonymous so nap pods nap pods i i don't think it's gonna go far but i'll try always ask can't hurt to ask our friend Kay um has said yes to nap pods yes she listened and she said absolutely yes to nap pods we've been getting really good response to this episode that we just had of course everyone has work problem. Everybody's got opinions about work. Yeah, and so new listener Christopher, Christopher Murray says, this sounds like a very interesting workplace. Not sure my little apartment would be up to the co-worker invasion though. <laughs> so off to the park. All right. Yes, no, the park is good and then you don't have people messing up in your stuff. So, it just have you have everybody has to have a hot spot though because you don't you won't have Wi-Fi unless you go to a park that has Wi-Fi and I don't know if they make those. They do in England, yes. Free Wi-Fi. And free all that. Wi-Fi, that's on the buses. Oh, okay. They have free Wi-Fi on the buses? Yeah, They have trains. Wi-Fi on the buses? Yeah, and trains. We don't have that. Over- do we have that over here? When's the last time I was on a bus? But do they have free Wi-Fi on buses over here? Well, I should clarify that the free Wi-Fi, the the bus with the free Wi-Fi that I saw was the like touristy one, like the double-decker like... Um, tour around london one right so i don't know that the regular buses have it but the trains do listeners in the uk do your buses have have free wi-fi if so let us know get in touch unscrewed up at gmail.com ladies and gentlemen the wilsons will now unscrew it up let's jump into today's topic a little bit of a different format 
If you've listened to our other podcast, Super Familiar with the Wilsons, you know that Josh and Amanda both like ourselves a good quiz. I like my quizzes. I do not like Josh's quizzes. And okay. I think that's probably reciprocal. Yes. Oh, very much so. Well, yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't hide. Because you're always doing quizzes that involve me like revealing things about myself. Well, that's what the listeners want. They just want to know you. No, they, they really don't. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give you a quiz, Amanda. But really what it is, what we're going to unscrew up here is the fact that I think that uh, there are a lot of body parts that have names that, that if you like don't know the name then like you don't know what it does and that's so it's silly not to serving me. the function okay yeah, i don't think it is um so like you know like maxilla what well there it's all rooted in latin okay you know but, that. right so we need to root it now in our language of modern choice here. english okay. yeah so this is how this is going to work i'm going to give you a a name an alternate name and you're going to try to guess what the body part is that i'm trying to name and then i have other ones that you know, if you don't get that, then some maybe, options. Maybe you can get it by the next okay. one and the next one. Okay. And then at the end of each, I've included a fun little fact about that body part because, hey, we here at the Wilsons, we care about you. We want you to learn. We do. And so here's your first example. Okay. So on this one, a an alternate name would be Universal Ocular Interfaces. Okay. Well, uh, ocular is vision. So um, eyelids. Well, close. So let me give you the second one. Light marbles. Okay, so eyeballs. Eyeballs. And then vision portal was another one. And mm-hmm. then visionariums, which I think I is- I kind of like visionariums. Visionariums, the very poetic. Right. So some of these will be scientific. Some of these will be poetic and-, and Just you know, whatever you were feeling. Okay. So here's the fact. Did you know this? Did you know that the cornea is the only part of the body with no blood supply? It gets its oxygen directly from the air. Oh, that's interesting. I, I didn't did know, know that. It know absorbs that. it from the air? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which makes sense to me because it's not like you see like little blood vessels in, in your cornea. Like you'd see yeah. them if they were there. So yeah. there you go. Oh, by the way, in camera terms, the human eye is about 576 megapixels. Okay. Thanks. So my phone is a lot better than, than my yeah. eye is what we're saying here. Okay, so next one. The first, your first choice is mise en place processors. Uh, taste buds. No. Emergency bottle openers. Teeth. Teeth. That's right. These are your teeth. <laughs> you should not. Teeth are not tools. I mean, they're tools for eating your food, but they are not tools for opening a bottle. Don't, please don't do that. The I mean, Wilsons I, do not suggest that you do that. But how many did it as a kid? I, I, I why was it drinking out of bottles as a kid? Other than like a nursing bottle, but not like well, a no, Bud like, Light. What are you drinking? Coke. Remember the the glass yeah, Coke bottles that you needed a bottle soda. cap. I'm sorry. What? I wasn't allowed to drink soda. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's probably the right decision, but also yeah. you had no childhood apparently. Yes. Um, no, I've I've uh, my teeth are, are all chipped and and they could be a lot, but you know, in a lot better condition. You know, the other thing that you should not do with your teeth. What? Chew ice. Yeah, you do like to chew some ice. No, I haven't. I haven't chewed ice in a long time. Really? But as a kid, I would chew it all the time. I've heard you chew ice. You like the Publix ice because it's like the crunchy ice. You like that. It's ice. been a long while. Okay. It's well, I've this, been married a long time. Yeah, but that's before the pandemic. What you're referencing. Okay. okay. So the the three and the four uh, choices were sh- soup strainers. Ew. Or my personal favorite, the personal portcullis. I don't. What is a portcullis? You don't remember from Taskmaster? Portcullis. It's the it's the spiky thing that oh, yeah, comes yeah, down yeah, yeah, in yeah, front yeah. of a castle yes. entry. Yes. 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 Portcullis. Yep. All right. Next one. So let's see. You got that one. I should probably keep track of your score, right? Yes. So you have two. I'm two for two. All right. So your next one, thought warmer. Oh. Thought warmer. Your skull. No. Face frosting. Your hair. Hair is correct. Okay. And the other two choices were your tress tracks. <laughs> tress tracks is ridiculous. Get or your here. thermal regulation filaments. Okay. That's not So I grew up in Miami, and I started to lose my hair at, uh, at around the age of 19. I don't know if I've talked about it in this, this podcast or not. It was a terrible, terrible day, right, when I realized yes. that this thing was happening. And I tried to hold on to it way too long. I yes. definitely used product. Yeah. I, it's really weird to have a mullet 
in the back and like losing it in the front. Yeah. Because you know how they, how they say it's like the 1090? What's the 1090? 10% of your hair in the front, 90% in the back. Oh, You've I've never not, heard no. of that? Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. I had 590 okay. and that other 5% were, were, was retreating <laughs> right quick. But I remember the day I decided to look at Michael Jordan shaves his head, Andre yeah. Agassi shaves his head, I can shave my head. I felt so free. Did that you? Day. <laughs> oh my gosh. And where I really felt it was in the car. Because I had stopped rolling down my windows. Oh, because you didn't want it to blow. The... Were you afraid it was going to blow your hair off? Well, no, I had product. Oh, like, I was thinking it was like leaves in the tree, like hanging on in autumn <laughs> and a strong Gripping breeze on. comes yeah, along. No. Yeah. no, a lot of product. And so I didn't want to mess up my hair. Yeah. And so I didn't have my... And there's no greater joy driving than riding around with the windows down, right? And the day that I shaved my head and I got out, it was like, I, <laughs> I was a new man. I was so happy. Right. Here's my hair fact. Everyone sheds between 40 and 150 strands of hair per day. I mean, I certainly do. Do you think you're closer to the 150 Probably, strands? and I don't know how I'm not bald, but I've always, I mean, I just have thick hair and I've always lost hair my whole life. Like, yeah, it's no, just... you, do, you do have really thick hair. Yeah. Also, hair, though, is the thing that grows the fastest. Yeah. You know, it, it grows the fastest on us. And and clearly you were not on me though. No, that's not a thing. All right, next, auditory pin cushion, earlobe, earlobe. That is correct. My other choice for them was ear testicles. Oh, gross! I think the pin cushion better. I was trying to look up the function of the earlobe. Like, why do we have earlobes? Yeah. And this is what I got. And this was on a. A, a website of a major newspaper, like what's supposed to be a reput reputable mm -hmm. newspaper. Mm -hmm. The main function of the human earlobe is to help maintain balance and warm the ear. How, if I don't have an earlobe, I'm not going to be balanced? So here's the thing. I went looking for corroboration because that yeah. did not sound, nowhere else on the internet does it make either of these claims. Oh, interesting. So I don't know the folks at the Toronto Star, I don't know what, and yes, I am calling them out, what are you doing? Are it, you just making things up? Because uh, there are people like me who will look for that. You know, I mean, say, they're the Toronto Star. They may not have to fact check. I don't know. I don't know what their the readership is. I looked at some of their other headlines and they looked like a legit newspaper, but I don't know. I okay. guess not. I guess not. All right, next one. Baby early warning detection system. Oh, God. Well... I mean, I have lots of choices, but I don't... Okay, G give me the second one. Sentinel, spelled S-C-E-N-T-I-N-E-L. Sentinel. All right, go ahead. Give me the third. <laughs> Face snorkel. Face snorkel? Your nose? Nose. Oh, you're saying the baby early detecting system because as soon as I'm pregnant, I can smell things all over the place. Is that what you mean? Well, also what you're detecting is like if baby does a boo-boo. Oh, got it. Th there it is. No, but when I'm pregnant, like that's how I knew I was pregnant with the seven-year-old because I sat up in bed and could smell the onions in a container in the closed refrigerator <laughs> from across the house. In a container. That's like oh my god, it was level. so bad. It was so bad, and that's how, that's why I took a pregnancy test because I was like, I've only experienced this one other time before, and it was with this seventeen year old when I was pregnant with her, and it was. I had to keep folded up news like crunched up newspaper in the freezer, and in the refrigerator to absorb smells because I could. I mean, I could not do life. Did you live just in a one room? No, house? I had taught preschool. There's no smells there. It was awful. I don't. I don't. I love my children, but I don't enjoy, I did not enjoy pregnancy. I did not glow. I did not, it was not the best time of my life, but I like my children, so it's fine. In case you're listening, 17-year-old or 7-year-old, yes. she loves you. So our fact is, after studying the faces of almost 2,000 people from around the world, Dr. Abraham Tamir concluded that there are, are essentially only 14 different types of human noses. Really? Yeah. Huh. And and the the most rare one apparently is the bulbous type nose that okay. Bill Clinton had. Okay, yeah, nobody wants that, so that's good. Well, I mean, at least one person wanted that. Moving on. You don't know that he wanted it. Oh, you're talking about okay. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. Got it. <laughs> Next, we're not a political podcast. Next, the taste prong. 
taste prong. Your tongue? Tongue. That is How correct. is it a prong? Well, it's a it's a protuberance. It's a it's a prong. It's protuberance a word. Um It is. Prong. It's no prong is like it like you could pierce something with a prong, couldn't you? You're gonna argue now with these Are wonderful. You, that's names? fine. It's fine. The I'm other one winning. is is the flavor saber. I mean <laughs> That's something different, but okay, go ahead. Or the gustatory feedback mechanism. See, I that's, mean, that that's one's more scientific. Yeah, that one is more scientific. I kind of like flavor saber. No, though. that stop. That brings to mind things that are not suitable for this podcast. What is wrong with you? I'm just telling you, I can't. Go ahead, All move right, along. Well, well, next on Super Familiar with the Wilsons on our next episode, it's going to be called Flavor Saber. <laughs> no. So go listen to that podcast. All right. Did you know that tongue prints are as unique as fingerprints? I did not. That's interesting. I can think of no place that we would be able to utilize this. No, why doesn't the FBI have like a database of of, of tongue samples, tongue prints? Why do you think? Who's the person who gets that job? <laughs> please, please, can you just give me the, the pad with the ink? I'll get all the fingerprints. You, I'll get toe prints. I do not want to get tongue prints. Next, I like this one. This one made me laugh. The Bendy Cruncher. The Bendy Cruncher. The Bendy Cruncher. I laughed so hard at this when, when I came like up with this. Is it like your spine? No. Okay. The second one, secondary landing pads. Knees? Knees, that is correct. <laughs> but Bendy Cruncher is yes. so appropriate for yes. my knees have always made so much noise. Oh, my knees don't make noise. My hips do. And it's like, it's like... Uh, grinding noise oh, as well. Good. It's not popping. It's just like... You're going to need a knee replacement. That's not good. I don't think so because they don't hurt. It just makes a I grinding noise. I think it should make that noise. And then the last uh, name choice of the, the leg linker, which I like okay, as well. Okay, I like yeah. that too. This is a fact that you probably already knew, that our audience probably already knew. Babies don't have kneecaps. Yes. I didn't... I mean, I knew that... Well, actually... I I don't know that I realized that, but I know that babies have are born with more bones than adults have because that they is fuse correct. together, right? Yes. Um, but also, for the longest time, our seven year old thought that kidneys were in his knees. Well, that makes sense because they were his kids' knees, and right. so I maybe that's what he had instead of kneecaps. Kids and then knees? adult knee knees just slowly like. It moves to they, your back. I don't up. know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Very good. Very good. Yep. Babies don't have kneecaps, which uh, of all of the the bones for them not to have and then develop later, I don't understand why that's a thing. Well, because they don't walk yet. Oh, well, I guess so. Maybe they have them by the time they crawl. Well, I would hope so, because you kind of need that. Right. Maybe they develop. Maybe they're just like really, really developed calluses. <laughs> okay. Like they're crawling and then they, yeah. they make their kneecaps. All right. No, no, no. Next, satisfaction communication indicator. Oh, goosebumps. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, no, that's not it. Next one, contrary digital grippy. Uh, something with fingers. Okay, can, can you please be a little Fingertips? bit... Fingertips? And then the third one, Precision grasping gear. Just fingers. All right. You got one wrong. Oh, what is Thumb. it? Thumb. Oh. It's the contrary digital grippy. It's contrary. It's opposable. Yeah. Okay, but why is it satis... Oh, thumbs up. <laughs> like, why is it satisfaction? <laughs> she said, oh, God, I wish we were videoing this. Because Amanda's sitting here with both of her thumbs up, wiggling them, saying, why is it satisfaction? <laughs> oh, <laughs> thumbs up. Oh, very okay. good, very good. But then also, if there's no satisfaction, it's thumbs, thumbs down. down. Um, thumbs, this is the fact, thumbs have their own pulse. Oh, really? Yes. Why? Yes, because, they're, because there's a large um, artery that goes through them. Oh. So it has its own pulse point. Nice. It's not different than the rest of your body. It's I mean, not it's still going to be in sync with the yes, rest it, of my pulse? Yes, it is. They would be weird if not. What if it was like, yeah, like a counterbeat? <laughs> well, as long as it's in rhythm, that would be cool. <laughs> Next, lift levers. What are your lift levers? Your feet? No, that's good, but no. Confusion signaling device or devices. Shoulders. Shoulders. That is right. Because your shoulders are your confusion signaling device. Yep. Do you make yeah. do you make that that mm -hmm. gesture? No, I send that meme. I mean, I send that GIF a lot. There's a GIF of um uh Reese Witherspoon. I think from like a movie or whatever, doing like a one shoulder. And I have a work colleague where she and I send that frequently to each other. 
like a lot, like way more than we probably should. So I don't physically shrug, but I metaphorically shrug or I not metaphorically representationally shrug. You know uh, who does that though? The seven year old does. Of not. course he does. It's because he's not discovered memes yet. That's right. But I also do the thing where you do the eyebrow. I can't do that. You can lift one eyebrow. Yeah. Yep. There, there you go. Next. Oh, I get. I do have to tell you my my shoulder s- story. So what I know about the shoulders. The shoulder is the most mobile joint in the body. It moves up and down, as well as rotates in and out on all planes. Given that it's more mobile, it is also less stable, which makes it more susceptible to injury. So basically, it has only one, I was was reading about this, like one point of structural contact, and the rest of it is connected by ligaments and bones. So yeah, it's very loose because it has to be Mm -hmm. very versatile, but very breakable. And one of the bones, it involves three bones, right? Your Mm -hmm. shoulder, the whole shoulder. And one of them is called the scapula. Okay, yes. You know what that is? It's like the your um, shoulder blade scapula. Yeah, yeah. Now I know that because we had a PE teacher in, L- in no, I think junior high school, back before it was uh, middle school, named Perry Elton Dickens, right? Okay. Now that is a heck of a name for yes. a PE teacher because his first two initials were PE, Perry Elton. <laughs> and I'm sure his last name did not get him made fun of at all. He was, uh, I mean, but I don't, he didn't strike me as that type. Or else he did get made fun of and he developed like a real funny, um, like sarcastic, like mm-hmm. very, very engaging character. He's mm-hmm. definitely a character. Mm-hmm. But he would always say, okay, men, grab your scapulas. And that oh. was like a stretching exercise. Grab our own, not other yes. people's. Yes, Um It was a stretching exercise. So there you go. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Next, face ledge. Chin. Ah, very good. Uh, that also is your beard subflooring. <laughs> not mine. And your secondary external food storage area. Well, if you have a beard. Yeah, well, it doesn't just stick on my chin. Sometimes, if you've got like, uh, like, uh, oh yeah, like you get drip like ketchup yeah. or or whatever yeah, yeah. Uh, or whatever. Um, so here's another fun fact: the chin plays a significant role in facial expressions. It's a key part of our nonverbal communication, contributing to expressions of determination, thoughtfulness, and even stubbornness. And the interesting thing about all of these facts is now, like, I'm moving my chin. Before mm-hmm. I was moving my shoulders. Becoming a little self-conscious about how we we posture ourselves, but it's interesting because I was I follow this TikToker. His name is Vin something or another. He's a public speaker and like specializing in communication, and he talks a lot of being super aware of your body language mm-hmm. and the body language that you receive, but more like like how you present yourself. And mm-hmm. so maybe it's not a bad thing to be aware. Sure. You know, for those who have a resting angry face, yes. You know, be be aware that this is what you are conveying, and maybe you know you'll have an easier time of it. Next, expression modulation system. You've stopped counting the things I got right. Thank you. Expression modulation system eyebrows. Very good. The other name for that was forehead fringe. <laughs> That's excellent. Did you know that your brow hairs grow faster in the summer because of the warm weather? I did not. And the fact that we're more active. What? Yeah. Being more active makes your eyebrows grow? I guess if you sweat more, because my assumption is that your brows oh, are yeah, there to, to keep the sweat out of your eyes, right? Nobody told me that your eyebrows thin. Now, I have really thick hair, and I used to have really great eyebrows, but they have thinned over my adulthood, and I don't like it. My eyebrows are going rogue. Yours are trying to leave your face. Well, no, they're staying attached. They're just wanting to reach out to new horizons. That's right. They're they're trying to grab I've bent this way all my life. What's over there? Yeah. That's what all my eyebrows are saying. So, you know, it calls to mind something that I would like for Wilson Technologies to work on, right? Okay. So I've written a commercial for, for this product. Would you mind reading it? Sure. Are your eyebrows on strike, staging a rebellion against symmetry? Well, fret not, brow enthusiast. Introducing the Brow Press 3000, the eyebrow iron that's here to tame those unruly brow hairs and bring harmony to your face. All right, so already, a, a, a little tiny iron for your eyebrows. Like a flat iron. Great idea. Keep going. Okay, I burn myself several times. Say goodbye to brow bedlam and hello to brow bliss. 
The Brow Press 3000 is the tiniest iron in town, specially designed for those wayward brow hairs that won't fall in line. Watch as it effortlessly straightens and smooths those quirky arches, turning your brows into a masterpiece of facial follicle finesse. Follicular, that's hard. Hold on, take two. Turns your brows into a masterpiece of facial follicular. That's, <laughs> I can't say that. Follicular. Follicular. Okay, hold on. Watch as it effortlessly straightens and smooths those quirky arches, turning your brows into a masterpiece of facial follicular finesse. Yay! So why settle for brow mageddon when you can have brow volution? Get your brow press 3000 now and unleash the power of perfectly pressed eyebrows, where every brow deserves a pressing engagement. Good Lord. Yay. Lots of alliteration you've employed. Wilson Technologies, you got to make it happen. This is what I need, a tiny... It's a tiny little like, tiny, flat iron. Yeah. Or like we have a steamer here and I'm tempted. I'm really no, tempted. No, don't steam your face. Well, because it doesn't respond to, to any sort of little brush. We've tried that. And I'm not putting product in my eyebrows. You should put the... I have clear gel. I am not putting product in my eyebrows. Well, first of all, what if I'm sweating and the product drips down into my eyes? Then we're done. We're done. That's it. You stop existing. No, you're not done. You rinse your eye out. Solved. Okay. Oh, okay. Rinse your eye out. That's a thing that's easy to do. All right. Next body part. The parental escalator for children. Your arms. You're going to carry those people all over the place. No. Close, but no. Okay. The dorsal domain. Shoulders. No. No, we already done shoulders. Dorsal. What's your dorsal? Next one. Foundational support framework. Or, last one. Your hips. No. The surrender signal indicator. I have arms? You're back. You're back. Yeah, if you're running away, you've surrendered. No. Dorsal is, with your dorsal so fit and your I'm, dorsal. Yeah, back. so I'm yeah. thinking of like carrying the kids upstairs. You know, parental escalator for children. I do put the children on my back. Or, or not, the, I don't carry the 17-year-old up the stairs. But when the 7-year-old is insistent that he cannot walk up the stairs, the only way I can do it is on my back. Which is going to be a problem because he's almost as tall as you are right I now. I know. Yeah. So he doesn't you... weigh nearly as much as I do, though, though. He's tall, but he's like still a tiny little thing. And the fact I have for your back is that you know... That poor posture can lead to constipation. Yeah, that does not surprise me. That's why there's all those like step things that you put your squatty legs potty. On. Yeah, or as I did. When I mean, I, I knew the name of it. I was just trying to say it's not like it. Squatty potty. Yeah, that bothers me. I like that. I love mm-hmm. the the alliteration. That's it's, not it's, alliteration. That's rhyming. Squatty potty. Oh, you're right. The rhyming. The <laughs> whatever, dude. Get out of here. You know, I tried that. Like, I didn't want to purchase one, but... I, yes, you used books or something. I had two stacks of books next to my body for <laughs> about two weeks. And I was like, forget this. <laughs> well, partially, so I'm sitting there, I want to read the book. And then, you know, I got... And you then know. you're uneven, like one <laughs> looks like it's higher than the other one. Yeah, we don't want anything escaping. All right, next one. The sweat socket. Your armpit. That is correct. Also known in my world as your perspiration portal... Or your auxiliary vetted, <laughs> I can't even say it, the auxiliary ventilation chamber. I'd rather that because I hate the word pit. Like, I just hate it. I hate armpits. I hate when people say my pits. Like, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. You, a pit in the ground, does that bother you? I, I, Peach pit? No, just when you're talking about your body. I don't like it. Yeah, I'm supposing that, like, butt pit would be very unpleasant. No, nobody wants that. Nope. All right, next one. Oh, um, no, I didn't get my fact yet. Sweat itself doesn't smell. Did you know this? It's the interaction between bacteria on your skin that causes body odor. Did yes, you know I that? didn't know that. Okay, I, I didn't necessarily. I, I mean, I didn't think about it. All right, next one. Grandparent welcoming area. Um, uh, uh, your arms? Embarrassment holder. Uh, your tummy? Sassy chassis. <laughs> I just like that. The sassy chassis. Your hip. Throw or your hip lastly, facial splash guard. Your eyelids. Your cheeks. What? The grandparent welcoming area. Oh, oh let me pinch your pin- cheeks. Okay, nobody actually pinches cheeks. Uh, the grandparents do. Sassy chassis just it, it yes. is fun for me. I don't know. Did you know that in animals, markings on the cheek area i.e. stripes or spots, are often features 
that you can differentiate between species or individuals. Yeah, individuals. No two Individual. cheeks are the same. Individual jaguars. All right, next one. You should get this one. The slap paddle. That's your bottom. <laughs> no. That's your hand. That's your hand. It slap slaps paddle. your bottom. Yeah, you're right. Or otherwise known as your built-in cup your grasping and feedback system, or what I like to call it, the high five hub. <laughs> That's cute. I like that. Did you know that 50% of your hand strength comes from, what would you guess? Um, I don't know. Your pinky finger. Really? Right? I don't think it's very... Well, you know what the weakest finger on your hand is? Um, probably your ring finger. It is your ring finger because that's what the, the, the beauty people tell women to put um, eye cream on with your ring finger because it has the least amount of like strength to it so you're not pulling your skin as much. The ring finger does feel like the only good purpose it has. Well, now now I know of another purpose, but yeah. is to hold your ring because it, it is definitely the least mobile and for me, it's the least able to operate independently yeah. of all of my fingers. Now, I will tell you that I'm pretty certain that I've broken my left pinky before. Oh, because it I, doesn't lay straight. It doesn't. I remember the moment, too, we were, I was playing basketball, and, mm -hmm. and I got my, my, my hand whacked or whatever, and mm -hmm. it hurt really badly. Mm -hmm. And it hurt really badly for weeks, but of course, I didn't take right. it in. Right. I take it in, Take by the it way. in, like, like you take your car in. But it... <laughs> When I naturally now hold my hand up, yeah. it, it doesn't want to touch. No, yeah, it, it's it's set apart. Or uh, it's really they've had an argument. It's angry with the other three. They don't speak anymore. Well, first of all, uh, we've already established that, that whatever happened, it's not Ring Finger's fault. Ring Finger no. doesn't do anything, right? Ring Finger. So. Well, the Pinky Finger is convinced that the Ring Finger should have protected it. There you go. All right. So anyway, have you ever broken a bone? Of course, I broke my foot. You broke your foot. I've broken my nose, but that's not a bone. By falling down. How'd you bro I know how you broke your foot. You uh, fell down stairs. I you fell down a stair. One Because you were trying stair. to vacuum the stairs. I was trying to vacuum the stairs with a corded vacuum. Don't do that. It's not a good choice. But how did you break your nose? Do I know this story? Um, I Maybe you do. I have a scar where I hit it. I was 19. I was working summer camp at the Y. And I was bending over to unplug something, like a fan or something that was in the, the room. And there was a wooden bar that I didn't clock and just until bent it over, clocked until you. Until it yes. clocked me and bent over and hit my nose here and it broke the cartilage and cut my nose open. Oh, that's not a fun and story. And I have black eyes. Next one the mid socket. Your hip. Your hip socket. Your hip no, bone. you keep saying hip. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you just for sake of our listeners, none of but these are hip. But that's midway through your body and your hips have a socket. Okay. I'm just letting you off the hook. None of these are hip. All right, so the core connector. I mean, it's your spine. Or the last choice, the factory setting food receiver. Your tummy. Your stomach. Your belly button. Oh. Mid, okay. Mid socket. It was the factory setting food receiver, but it's you don't true. do that anymore. Yes. So there you go. That's good. You're right. I would not have gotten there. Okay. You know what I didn't do, and I, I, I'm, I'm always curious, and I'm sure that's an easy answer to find out, but I've never Googled it. Why any versus Audi? I think, it ha I, honest to God, and I could be wrong, think it has something to do with the way that the thing is tied at birth, but I could be absolutely wrong. Well, I understood that it's not actually tied, that they just cut it off they and clamp, clamp it, it off. Right. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Did you know, what do you think, you, I'll put this in a different way, a little mini, mini quiz. What do you think your belly button is connected to in your body? Nothing. It's just there your liver really yeah isn't that cool isn't that interesting why is it it's just, that's just the way it's happened okay all right next the bendy breaky <laughs> that's my foot the bendy breaky close stride socket ankle your ankle or the strain catcher is what i said yeah. your ankle i feel like if anyone breaks anything, it's going to be your ankle. Like, mm -hmm. I always hear, oh, he broke his ankle. It's even a phrase. Oh, he, he broke your ankle. It's a but bit I did phrase. not break my ankle. You did not. Way, way to be. Have you sprayed your ankle? Yes. I've, I've rolled my, it. I've sprained my ankle more times than yeah. I've probably done a lot of good things in my life. So, But we have um, a, a family member that also fell down the stairs. And, and unlike me, it broke the actual ankle and the foot was hanging astride. So, yeah. yeah. No, not good. Ugh. Did you know that the soles of the feet contain more nerve endings per square inch 
of skin than any other part of your body. I mean, it makes sense because have you ever been driving and then you get an itch on the bottom of your foot and you're wearing like tennis shoes or something and you can't do anything about it? It's misery. I'm going to congratulate you for not mentioning Legos once. In, in, oh, no, Legos are awful. Yeah, in this fact. Okay, next. The bone bridge. Uh, your forehead? Shoulder noodle. Your collarbone. Skull support column. Your neck. Your neck. Did you know that giraffe have seven v- cervical vertebrae in their necks? Did you know that human beings have seven vertical vertebrae? I did know that. Uh, cervical vertebrae. In I necks, saw it yeah. on a reel or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty amazing, that. yeah. Um, yeah, I got nothing for that. Next. Where would a giraffe wear a bow tie? Uh, the giraffe could wear all of his bow ties. But would he wear it under his chin or would he wear it down like next to his shoulders? Well, where's his collar? I guess it would be down next to his shoulders. Or would... Think about that, though, because your collar is kind of supposed to go to about halfway up your yeah. neck, right? So halfway up its neck, it would have a collar and a bow tie. <laughs> Do you disagree with Amanda? <laughs> Get in touch. Unscrew it up at gmail.com. Night mode switches. Eyelids. Eyelids, also known as dust covers, face curtains, and lens caps. I like face curtains. Babies only blink once or twice a minute, whereas adults average 10 times a minute. That's got to have something to do with, I think, survival or something. Babies, yeah. those big old eyes, you yeah. keep them open so you can get fed, kid. All right, here we go. Next, treasure chest. That sounds not suitable for this podcast. It, but it is. Okay. Life sponge case. Your skull. Chest fist. Oh, your um, your rib cage. Rib cage. I like rib chest case. fist, actually. <laughs> or heart hood was another heart one. Heart hood is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rib cage. Treasure chest is funny. Yeah, it is. That's that, this. I did my best job on these. I got to say that that you could turn the podcast up off now because I think that I peaked <laughs> on this question. Um, did you know that that while listening to music, someone claims that your heartbeat will sync with the rhythm? That doesn't surprise me. Okay, I'm just saying someone claims because I don't know the support for that, and that would put me off really fast music or really slow. What about music without a beat? Then you just die. Then you're just not. Then your body doesn't know. No, I mean rhythm is a thing that is used. When rhythm you, is also a dancer. Go ahead. Rhythm is a dancer. Rhythm is a thing that is used when you are um, per, when you're providing trauma informed care to infants, toddlers, or children, and they get hypervigilant because of like increased levels of cortisol because of trauma response, that you use rhythm tapping and it, they will kind of sync their heartbeat and their, their breathing to it. And it also like harkens back to being in utero and hearing their mother's heartbeat and that rhythm will, um, it, they will sync to it. So it doesn't surprise me that there's the possibility, but it does, yeah, mean that like, depending on what you're listening to, that could be really aerobic or not. I mean, I feel like parents know instinctually that if your your kid is frustrated or upset, you pat their back, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's a thing. Listen, I've used tapping before when I'm yep. stressed. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll tap the middle of my, of my, um, my chest fist with my fingers <laughs> to, you know, to calm yeah. down. All right, next. Couple more here. Tiny anti tippy device. It's your baby toe. Or your auxiliary digital support peg or your chair leg detector. Or oh. my favorite, your balance bean. Oh, that's funny. Balance but bean yes, with an N. The chair leg detector. I don't know how many times I stubbed just that one baby toe. And I somehow managed, because we have a couple chairs that have like, the the legs are like, not what they're metal. Yeah. So they're thin. I get the toe in between the two toes. Yeah. Yeah. No, no it's, it's not good. I don't know how my pinky toe hasn't just broken off. Just, just like it's. Or I haven't broken it. Right. That's the other thing. I don't know how I haven't well, have, busted it have or you busted check it. Check to see if it's trying to leave your foot like your pinky finger. No, I do think that it's trying to leave my foot because it's the one thing that always get bonked, but you know, I, I don't yeah. think so. Did you know that explorers found a mummy in Egypt with a leather and wood contraption that is believed to be a prosthetic toe? The mm-hmm. Cairo toe dates back between 1069 BC and 664 BC and predates the earliest known prosthetic by at least 700 years. So, oh. 
the ancient Egyptians knew the power of the pinky toe. Pinky toe. Because you're going to fall over if you don't have one. It's also how the pyramids stayed up for so long. That's pinky toe. Pinky toe on each corner. Last one here. Sock supporters. Uh, Feet? Lower leg support mechanism. Lower leg tennis ball holder. What? Tennis ball holder? Or hairy leg segment. Your shin? Your calf. Your calf. Tennis ball holder. Yeah, because if if you have any sort of... People who usually don't have muscles anywhere else, they're going to have muscles in their calf. And it looks like a tennis ball? I mean, if you're fit... You have fit, really nice calves. That's what I'm saying, baby. You do. <laughs> you yeah. Do. You have really nice calves. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the calf. Did you know that your legs can help regulate body temperature? In addition to their mechanical functions, your legs also play a role in regulating your body temperature through a process known as vasodilation. Blood vessels in your legs can expand to release excess heat, while vasoconstriction can conserve heat when needed. It's the same for your feet. Is that why my feet get so hot? Well, that's the thing. My feet and your feet both change temperature so quickly really and so extremely. Right your feet are cold. Your feet are cold. Except when you're stressed. And then, and then your feet hot. are really hot. And so yeah. that's very interesting there. What's going on there? Don't know. You should figure it out on your quiz or ask Wilson Technologies to figure it out. I don't know. But cold feet are one of those things where like it's a it's a major heat regulator. Yeah. That and the top of your head, also another heat regulator, and your armpits. Stop saying pits. And your whatever the name, your sweat portals or whatever yes. I said. Yes, yes, yes. Perspiration portals. That is alliteration. There you go. All right, folks. So what do you think of our attempt to rename uh, things? And I'm sorry, Amanda, I stopped keeping track. I, I You mean, got I, at least six right. I mean, <laughs> I feel like I have a passing grade. Like, I did miss some, but I feel like I have more than more than 50% correct. So. Uh, our quizzes always fall down because I always, in the middle of them, forget to keep score. Because I really don't care how well you do, to be honest. So then there's Good. that. Excellent. All Glad right. There's so there's nothing right about it. <laughs> do you um do you have any sort of alternate names? Uh, write in. Let us know. Unscrewed up at gmail.com. So until we revisit this topic, Amanda, I would say that body part names are unscrewed. 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 As I mentioned, do you have something that you would want for us to fix, to unscrew up? Then email us at unscrewedup at gmail.com or drop us a line. Let us know what you think, uh, how we did. If you disagree, I want to know that too. And we will talk about it and most likely you when we read your letter out. But you in the context of what you've sent to us. not We're just not going to just start like Listen, I gossiping about these I, people. I, I don't have time to, to <laughs> social media stalk people right in. Sorry. Not going to do it. <laughs> All right, Amanda. I think we've unscrewed up everything that we could possibly unscrewed up. We better stop or people are going to be called. People will be notified. People will show up at the house and say, stop. Stop it. Just stop it. We are a part of the Whole Care Network, and that is a network of people and resources for caregivers, for people who take care of other people. Very important cog to our society, and we could not move forward as a people without those folks. So we are very thankful for you, and we want to offer to you resources. Go to thewholecarenetwork.com. All right, folks, so until next week. So we have Thanksgiving coming up. That's right. So have a happy Thanksgiving for those of you on the continent. For those of you across the pond, have a good Thursday. (laughs) Congratulations in getting rid of it. But whatever you do this next week. Don't screw it up. Bye. Bye. Bye.